moment about a specified axis. Let's do a scalar analysis of moment about a specified axis. Suppose we have this force F and it's directed upwards and we'll label it as force vector F of magnitude of 10 newtons. And let's call out some of these dimensions. Let's say that this is 2 meters and let's say that length here or that's 4 meters. We'll label our axes as x, y, and z. So the moment about this x-axis about that x-axis due to this force F is given by the following. We have to specify the perpendicular moment arm from a point that lies on this axis to the line of action of that force F. So in this case, it's pretty simple. We realize that the perpendicular distance or the moment arm would be this distance right here. So the moment would be defined by that distance or that moment arm times the magnitude of that force F. So in this case, it would be 2 meters times 10 newtons. So it would be 20 newton meters. And using the right hand rule, we have to determine whether that's a positive or negative moment. So we would actually have to direct our fingers along the moment arm, sweep it in the direction of F, and you'll find that your thumb should point in the positive X direction. So it's a positive, or we can write it as 20 Newton meter, and it's rotating counterclockwise. If I had to draw that moment as a vector on this diagram, I would draw something like this, saying the moment vector is right here. That's my moment about the x-axis, and it has a counterclockwise direction. So that's how it would be schematically represented on the x, y, z axes. Let's do another problem. We'll call this problem number two. So we'll use the same force in the same location. So let's say that's my force F and it too has 10 newtons in magnitude and it's directed in the Z direction with that being the X axis y-axis and the z-axis and again we'll say that this is two meters this right here is four meters so now what we want to know is the moment about the y-axis as a result of this force F so we actually want to know the moment about that axis Again, the moment about the y-axis due to that force F is given by a perpendicular distance from a point that lies on the axis to a point on the line of action of F. And in this case, again, it's simply this distance right here. This is our perpendicular distance or our moment arm. So for this problem, my moment arm 
times the magnitude of this force F will give me my moment. That's given by 4 meters times 10 newtons, which equals 40 newton meters. To determine the direction of that moment, what you want to do is take your fingers, direct it along the moment arm, sweep it up in the direction of the force. That would point your thumb in the negative y direction. Therefore, we would have a negative 40 newton meters, or you could write it as 40 newton meters in the clockwise direction. So this direction is what you would see if you were looking straight down. That's your eye. Okay, so you're looking in that direction and you would see the moment vector going in the clockwise direction. All right, let's do another problem. So we'll continue to use that same force and let's say it's something like this and we have the force F and it's directed upwards again with a magnitude of 10 newtons in the Z direction. And now what we would like to do is determine the moment about the z-axis. So that would be given by moment about the z-axis due to that force F. And again, we need to find the perpendicular distance from a point anywhere along this axis. And that is perpendicular to the line of action of F. But we realize that the force F is parallel to the z-axis, so it doesn't cause any moment. So that's simply zero. Moment about a specified axis using a vector analysis is as follows. Suppose we're given a three-dimensional force vector. So it'll have an x component, a y component, and a z component. And we want to know the moment about a specified axis, so let's say it lies on the xy plane as shown, and we'll call that the a axis. And we want to know the moment that this force causes about this a axis. In order to calculate that moment, we need to introduce a new equation, and it looks like this. Moment about the a axis due to the force F is given by a unit vector that lies along that A axis. And we're going to take the dot product of a position vector that starts anywhere along a point on this A axis and ends up anywhere along a point along the line of action of force F. And we'll take the cross product with that force vector F. This unit vector A, let me expand upon that, is a unit vector that lies on this A axis. Since unit vector A is a vector and vectors are transmissible, it can be right here. So I can define that to be my unit vector or I can define this to be my unit vector. It doesn't matter. Whatever is the easiest to calculate from the given problem statement. This position vector needs to begin at a point along the a-axis. So this is the position vector, and it has to start from any point on the a-axis, and it has to end up at any point on the line of action of F. Therefore, I can choose this to be my position vector. Let's say this is a point 
on axis A and it'll end up let's say right there so I could choose this position vector to be R1 or I could choose this position vector to be that R2 let's say it could be R2 or I could also even say I want to choose this as my position vector let's call that R3 regardless of which position vector you choose we will still have the same magnitude of the moment that this force causes about the axis A so I'm going to erase the 3 and just keep it general we can expand this dot product and cross product by using a determinant. You take the x, y, z component of this unit vector and you write it right here. You take the x, y, z component of the position vector and you put it in the second row. And likewise, on the third row, you put the x, y, and z component of the force vector. To evaluate the determinant, you do the following. The parentheses times UAX minus, and we're going to put some terms in here, but you're going to multiply that by the Y component of your unit vector, and you're going to add this quantity times the Z component of the unit vector. To determine the components in the parentheses, cover up the first column. And you would have Ry times Fz minus Fy times Rz. Cover up the Uay column. And you would have Rx times Fz minus Fx times Rz. And for the last parentheses, you would have Rx times Fy minus Fx times Ry. If you evaluate all that, these are all scalar values. Therefore, you will get the moment about the a-axis due to that force F to be a scalar value. So let's do a problem. Suppose we're given this force vector with the following components of 6i plus 2j plus 3k and the unit is in newtons. And this dimension is given as 2 meters, 1 meters. And let's say this is right here. We'll say that's 3 meters. And from here to here, we'll say that's 4 meters. And we want to know the moment about this axis A that we have specified due to that force F. What we're required to find is the moment about the a-axis due to that force F. So the solution is as follows. We know that we have to use this equation that we just learned. So the moment about the a-axis due to the force F is given by the unit vector that lies along that axis A. We dot it with a position vector that will originate somewhere along this axis A and it'll end up somewhere along the line of action of this force F. In determining this position vector, there are infinite number of possibilities, but the obvious ones would be Perhaps this will go from here to here because we have the dimensions from this point to that point. And let's label the points. Let's call this point B, point A. Another possibility is to perhaps use this position vector. It can go from this point, and let's call that point C, and it can go from here 
to there. So those are our two possibilities. So we'll call that R from C to A. And we'll call this R from B to A. So it doesn't matter which position vector we choose. So I chose it to go from B to A. So I went B, A, and I need to cross that with my force vector up there. So let's start on this term. That's a unit vector that lies along this A axis. I'm going to define my unit vector that lies on that A axis to be um, in this direction. Okay, so that is my unit vector A. And because I have defined this to be my unit vector in that direction, I am now saying that my positive A axis is in that direction and my negative A axis is downwards. In order to determine that unit vector A, I need a position vector that goes from B to C divided by the magnitude of B to C. That would equal to negative 4i minus 3j. So that would be minus minus 4i minus 3j divided by the magnitude of that, which would be negative 4 squared plus 3 squared, which would give me negative 4 fifth i minus 3 fifth j. Next, this position vector r from b to a is given by minus 4 plus 1, so that would be minus 5i, minus 5i, and then positive 2j. Of course, that would be in meters. And f is given to me. So now I substitute all these terms into the original. So that would be negative 4 fifth i minus 3 fifth j, I dot it with rba minus 5i plus 2j, and I cross it with my force vector, which is 6i plus 2j plus 3k, and that would be Newton meters. In order to carry the dot product and the cross product computation. I can simply do this using a determinant. So the first row of the determinant would be this unit vector. So negative 4 fifth minus 3 fifth, no k component, so it's a zero. Next row would be my position vector, negative 5, 2, and there is no k component. And the third row would be my force vector. That would be a 6, 2, and a 3. To carry out the calculation, I have to do the following. I have to take that value and multiply it by the terms in this parentheses, subtract it by terms in these parentheses times negative 3 fifth, and add 0 times the terms in that parentheses, which would just equal to 0. So for the first parentheses, I cover up my 4 fifth column, and I would have 2 times 3 minus 2 times 0. For the second parentheses, I would have negative 5 times 3 minus 6 times 0. And the last parentheses, we said it was already equal to 0. Further simplifying these quantities, we'll get a magnitude of negative 13.8 Newton meters. So that is the moment about the axis A due to the force F. This negative sign means that the moment vector 
is in the negative A axis direction. Recall, since we had indicated that our unit vector is headed upwards, therefore that defined our positive A axis, our moment axis now points downwards. In other words, for our given A axis, which is defined positive that way and negative this way, our moment vector is then in this direction, and that is our moment vector about axis A due to the force F. Our magnitude of that vector is given by 13.8 Newton meters. The direction is in the negative A axis direction, but if we were to look in that direction, so that's our I, so that moment vector would be in this direction, right? So it'd be going counterclockwise. So, so here's a problem that you should try on your own. We're given a force vector that's three-dimensional. We're also given a line of axis A, which lies in the XY plane. It goes through point O and point A, and the dimensions um, for that location would be 2 meters by 2 meters. Point B is given by 3 meters into the x direction, 4 meters into the y, and down 2 meters in the z. So what's required now is for you to find the moment about the a-axis due to this force f and what you'd like to do is use the equation that we introduced given by moment about A due to a force F is equal to the unit vector that lies along that line A. And we thought that with a position vector and that force vector. The solution is shown here and this is if you choose your position vector to be ROB meaning you're going to choose it from O to B the solution if you choose your position vector to go from A to B that is you're choosing your position vector from A to B then you would get this determinant, but in both cases, the answer is the same. Let me know how it goes. Whoever gets to me first, I'll give you one extra point towards a quiz.